Guys, welcome back to the channel and welcome to the John Cooper Works. It's been a while and boy have I missed it. God, I love this car. Guys, welcome back to the channel. If you don't know me, my name is Jack. Hi, and this is my YouTube channel, Life in Motion. So, so good, this car. Oh. So yes, it's been a long, long time since this car has been on the channel. Uh, been super, super busy, but I'm glad to have it back. Although, if you've looked at the title of this video, it may be a little bit alarming. This car will soon be going. Yes, in this video, I'll be discussing a Come on, baby. Come on. Oh. oh my God, it's so quick. Oh my God, this car is just so, so good. So yes, in this video, I'm gonna be discussing replacing the John Cooper Works. Uh, I've mentioned it briefly before, I have said it, but in the last couple of weeks, I have been doing a lot of research uh, and I've been planning quite well over the last uh, maybe three or four weeks that in the next maybe few months uh, this will be going and a sports car will be arriving so this is what I'm thinking for the replacement there is the likes of the Jaguar F-Type Coupe uh, looking at the V6 uh, which is in the newer shape called the R Dynamic I think uh, which is the kind of 380 brake horsepower one um, looking at the TTS I think it's a really really good car I've driven a few TTs on the channel you can have a look uh, I will put a link on the description uh, below. But TTS, um, although someone was telling me that it doesn't do that little nice little farty pop sound when it changes gear, which is annoying because I really, really like that. So that will be to come. Um, Z4, I kind of rolled it off. Only comes in a uh, soft top and I don't like soft tops. I'm not really a massive fan of BMW anyway. Um, when it comes to Toyota Supra, uh, apparently it's a BMW underneath, which is basically the same car. Uh, so it's fine, but it's not really for me. And the last one on this is the Porsche 718 Cayman. It's mid-engine, one of the best sports cars out there. It looks fantastic, and it's probably one of the front runners at the moment. Uh, the only thing is it is a little bit more dear than the other cars. So uh, yeah, it's, it's a bit of a, a weighing up battle there. But just talking about this car for a second, why am I getting rid of it? What's wrong with it? Is anything broken? Well, no, nothing's broken on it. Uh, although I have had my fair share of tyres break, uh, and bits and bobs, it's absolutely fine. There's nothing wrong with it, it's mechanically perfect. Um, it's only done 26,000 miles, so it's not really that the mileage is getting too high. Although I did say I wanna definitely change the car before 30,000 miles. I wanna kinda keep it in the 20s. Um, it's not too high mileage. What it is for me is I've, I think I've had, what have I had now? I've had a 1998 Mini Cooper, I've had a 2013 Mini Cooper, and I've had now the John Cooper Works, all being hot hatches, and I think, that the hot hatch for me is now kind of done. It, you know, I've had a great time with it. There are still so many nice hot hatches out there. And if you look at the kind of super hatches, RS3s, A45S, the new ones, um, they are super, super good cars. They're, they're miles better than this. If you, if you look at speed uh, performance, obviously they're a lot, lot more expensive. But I feel that that for me now is kind of out of the way. It's, it's done, I've really enjoyed it, but I'm ready to move on. And I think sports cars are the next thing for me. Um, I did have a battle in my head between 4x4 and sports car. Um, but yeah, it's the sports car one at the moment. I get a 4x4 in years to come when I need to move stuff around if I get a new house and uh, family, all that kind of stuff. So that can be done in future. But for now, I reckon a nice little two-seater fast sports car would really suit me nicely. Now, obviously, a coupe and a hot hatch are totally different cars in the way they look. Absolutely. Don't want to argue with that. But what this car has got is style and character, and that's what I want in my new car. Now, if you look at, some, for example, a BMW Z4, for me, the new ones do look a lot, a lot better. Actually, inside is where the style kind of lacks a little bit for me. Uh, they're a little bit standard. Whereas if you look at, say, an Audi TTS, the inside of it is amazing. 
you've got this huge virtual cockpit in front of you. You've got what this, what I think they call is like an airplane wing dashboard. So the air vents are like uh, jets of a plane. So that's so, so cool. It's really, really nicely thought out. And not to say that BMW aren't thought out, but I just see when I get into an Audi compared to a BMW, I like it a little bit more. And so it's tricky. You think hopefully with the money you're paying on a Z4 or an Alpha 4C or an Alpine A110 or an Audi TT, that you're all going to be basically very, very happy. And most people will be. And I'm just probably a little bit picky. And so I like to make sure that I'm in love with the car because ultimately you're going to be on the inside at least there all the time you're with the car. Um, so yeah, very, very important to have character on the inside. But back to the outside, this car's got nice little bubbly features. Uh, it's got a nice aggressive stance at the back. It's nice and wide. It does hunker down nicely. Admittedly, minis have always had a little bit of a standard ride height problem where they've been a bit high. Um, but you know, you can get away with it. Actually, they look pretty cool. And at the front, it's got not too much going on, but it's got enough that it looks quite uh, aggressive and exciting. Uh, if you look at, for example, I will take a, a 718 Cayman with just the standard bumper and standard wheels. It can look a little bit plain at the front. You know, there's nothing going on with it. Uh, and that can be a little bit like, oh, that's, that's a shame. Obviously at the back, you get a little bit more style and you get that classic kind of 911 baby brother styling. But, you know, in this, you get all of it. So actually, this car, you don't have to compromise with style and performance. Whereas actually on those cars, do you? Um, obviously with those kind of cars, you can spec different shapes and different bumpers, which is what I will do. Uh, and so I make sure that I get the right kind of look for the car. So I have that excitement and that character. Um, but there's one word that I don't think I would call this car, that I probably would a Cayman, which is sexy. Now, I'm not saying that I need more sex appeal, obviously. But what I am saying is that I want something with a little bit of elegance, a little bit of class, something that is just a really nice, pure car. And this is great, you know, this is exciting, it's jazzy, it's got a good color scheme. But if I can have a sports car with a really nice color, a lovely spec option, just to look classy and sophisticated, that's kind of what I want. I think that's kind of where I am at the moment uh, with, with how, I guess, how I guess I want to present myself and then subsequently, I guess, what I reflect myself then in for cars. Uh, and I guess that's kind of reason why I am looking to change the car from a bit of a deeper point of view. My God, this is getting really emotional now. But from a deeper point of view, I guess in my life now, I've kind of got to a point when I want to take the next step and I've got a lot of things I want to achieve. And I'm almost at the point when it's time to do that. And I've been working hard and preparing for this moment. I think it's now time to push on and really excel and achieve what I want to. And so almost like the car is a a acknowledgement to that and a real, almost like a, it's almost like when you tell yourself something and only you know that you told yourself it. You set, you set yourself a task that you want to lose weight. Uh, by Christmas, you want to lose uh, a stone, for example, right? But you, because you don't tell anyone else about it, if you don't actually achieve it, well, no one else is upset to you. You know, no one's like, oh my God, why did you not do that? You have a penalty against it. But it's only you that are a little bit disappointed. And at the beginning, maybe you are okay. You know, okay, oh, I'll, I'll do it next, next six months. I'll lose two stone, perfect. But the more you do it, you quickly realize that those small victories or losses, they do accumulate. And you suddenly realize that if you keep losing and losing, because you're setting yourselves small achievable goals, that when you lose, when you don't achieve them, it does start to get to you. And so actually I think maybe the buying a uh, sports car is almost that this is rock solid, you are moving on and you are taking the next step in your life. And I think for all, it's important as well that other people recognize that you are moving and progressing forward. Um, sorry, this is getting really, really like, I don't know, not emotional, but uh, it's getting quite deep. But you know, that's just what, that's just, you know, why when I wanted to explain why I'm looking to change my car, it is because I feel like that. That's how I feel. And that's what ultimately cars do for so, so many people. I know a lot of people say, how on earth can you justify spending 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 100 grand on a car, it's nuts, it gets you from A to B. And yes, it does get you from A to B, but there is no argument between someone who just uses a car for A to B and someone who loves cars. Because there is no, there's never gonna be any rationale between the two. I would never understand how you can just have a car from A to B. That's not true. I can understand it, but I would never adopt that policy of getting a car just to go from A to B. And I think a lot of people wouldn't justify or wouldn't say to themselves, right, I'm gonna buy a 50 grand car 
because I want to, because I want to look, or because I think I should be interested in cars. Now that it's not going to happen, it doesn't make any sense to anyone. So, for this car, for example, it's a lovely car, but it can be expensive. And a lot of people, again, it swings around about. If you think that this car, say, used £20,000, if you think that is expensive, or you think that's not expensive, it's totally up to you. And whether you justify spending it or not is up to you. One of the reasons why I really like the 718 Cayman is because it is mid-engined and it comes from the Porsche Grand. And actually, in the last couple of years, I haven't really been that in tune with Porsche until maybe the last, I'd say six to 12 months, where I saw a Singer Porsche uh, at Goodwood. Uh, actually, that was in 2018. Um, obviously saw one again new this year and actually when you see those kind of cars and you see the the engineering behind it and where it's come from where it's going to go I've really been bought into that particular brand obviously I've got a big relationship with Audi because I used to work there and so I've always always loved the products of Audi so again that's a big link for me and that's why that's one another uh, front contender but um yeah it's it's tricky to justify why you should spend it and so when I look to say, right, this is going to be moving on, moving on with my life, I'm going to take the next chapter and I'll buy this car. It's not to, sh- to say to people that, for example, you can afford that car, that's why you want to pay for it, because it needs to come from within, is, is what I believe. Now, if you're not into cars and it's not an A to B, but you want to just be seen as having a nice car, no problem. Crack on, buy yourself something nice, buy yourself a donut. But if you don't care about the image, you just want the best car that you can afford that fits your lifestyle, for me, a sports car at the moment, then do it. So just to discuss what I'm looking at, I mentioned, let's say Audi TTS and Porsche 718 Cayman are the two front runners for me. The Audi TT, very, very impressive. 310 horsepower, Quattro's all wheel drive, automatic S-Tronic, 0-60 in under five seconds. It's a really, really impressive car under five seconds, I think it's like four and a half actually. And then Porsche 718 Cayman, mid-engined, it's, it has got that brand, which is, is actually really, really cool. Um, but again, roughly 300 horsepower, automatic, rear wheel drive, maybe a little bit more excitement, possibly. Uh, and around just just under or, or something, five seconds, if you get the Sport Chrono pack. The Porsche, mid-engined, the weight, the balance to ba- weight, balance to weight, right? weight, balance, balance to weight, what is it? Top power, power to weight ratio? No. Weight distribution. Oh my God, there we go. So, sorry. Mid-engined, good weight distribution. Because it's in the middle. Most of the weight is in the middle of the car. So you've got good traction and good weight either side of it, right? Yes, exactly. Uh, whereas the TT is front-engined, but Quattro uh, is actually more dominant to the front. Although when you put it in like dynamic mode, it does actually go uh, a little bit of torque to the back as well. So it gives you a little bit more of a feel of a sports car. What on earth am I doing? This is, why is everything closed? This is just ridiculous. Anyway, you know, I've, I've been around the 718 a little bit more recently. Uh, a friend of mine works at Porsche uh, and is a really, really good guy uh, and has been helping me out quite a lot. And uh, obviously from my, from my yesteryears at Audi, uh, my old, my old uh, friend at Audi, uh, in, in Basingstoke has been helping me out as well. Um, so we've been looking at that. So yeah, it's a tricky situation, but unfortunately I've got plenty of time. I'm not in a rush. Uh, and um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Now, if you like this video, uh, make sure to give it a thumbs up. I appreciate, you know, I haven't shown you the cars that I want to buy, um, but ultimately, you know, I haven't got access to them. You know, I'm not, you know, I'm not that YouTuber that uh, can just go and grab the keys to, to one of the cars and show you guys. But I really hope you can continue with this journey and actually see me replace this car with one of those sports cars. Um, but please subscribe to see future videos just like my new collection, hopefully very, very soon. Uh, but for now, I'll see you soon.